Starting something new is never easy, especially if it's a new career. Are you new to the pattern design game? Do you feel like everyone's got it and you just have miles and miles to go until you reach a destination? Is it even worth pursuing or are you just too late to the game? Does being a beginner suck? I'll dispel the most common doubts to help you cope with the imposter syndrome and show you that you as a beginner have an advantage over experienced professionals and it's a big one. What is it? Watch until the end to find out. Hi Textile Buddies, I'm Daria, textile and surface pattern designer and artist, both traditional and digital. On this channel we talk all things textile pattern, color and artwork. Patterns are everywhere. Let's talk about the imposter syndrome in surface pattern design. First of all, what is imposter syndrome? The library definition is the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. So it means that a person feels that they don't belong to this community, they have no right to call themselves a designer, they feel like their patterns aren't good enough, they will never succeed and so on. If you aren't subscribed, please do so now. The ruthless data still show that many people who watch my videos are not subscribers. So let's fix that. It doesn't cost you anything, it only takes a second. And in return, more people find out about this channel, join us, and that motivates me to carve out precious time for making these videos. You probably were also brought here by the algorithm. So, you know, pay the favor back and help someone else discover this channel. So why does one feel like an imposter? I think it's a natural response to a new situation because when we start a career or a hobby, chances are high that we are not great at it, which makes a lot of sense. As my weaving professor told me when I was dressing the loom for the first time and I was beating myself up for being not very smart, hmm, how many times in your life have you done this before? None. So how can you be good at something if you have never done it before? Don't be so hard on yourself. We often forget that things don't happen overnight. Your brain needs time to process new information, lots of it, and grow new neuron connections. Did you know that when we learn something, our brain actually physically changes? New neuron connections are built, which is similar to building muscles. It's a very crude analogy, of course, but I hope you see what I mean. Another reason we might feel like imposters is comparing your beginning to someone else's end or middle and comparing ourselves to the best of the best. One compares themselves to the most successful big designers in the game and on top of that also to people who work out seven days a week and have an amazing body, to mothers who stay at home with their kids with great financial support from their spouse and good for them but not everybody has the same resources. If you are willing to compare yourself to others, and I know it's human nature, we do it unconsciously, try to do it in the same weight category, so to say. Like in martial arts, if you are lightweight, don't compare yourself, you know, don't compete with heavyweights. So if you are a beginner, compare yourself to other beginners with a similar skill set, not to the champions, or not to children's book illustrators if you are a surface pattern designer. Another thing to remember is there is a lot of fake success going on. If people are bragging that they are doing licensing non-stop or just give vague descriptions of success, it is not necessarily true. Take everything with a grain of salt. I noticed that people usually brag about things when they need to sell something to you. So please be aware of it. One more big source of the imposter syndrome is perfectionism. One often doesn't allow oneself to take a step in the field until the artwork is good enough, as they say. But for some people, it will never be good enough because they want everything to be perfect. And that is just impossible. Several studies have shown that 85 is the magic number of productivity. 85% of effort 
gives the maximum output. While if we strive to do everything at 100%, we get so caught up in the details and the striving for total perfection that things actually get worse, believe it or not. Do what you can with what you have now. If you are making patterns, start uploading them to print-on-demand websites like Spoonflower and Society6 to see people's reaction. Start reaching out to companies if you have a small portfolio. Nobody says you have to have a gallery of 10,000 designs. You don't have to know all the methods of making patterns to take freelance gigs. Just start doing things. You might be thinking, my designs are not good enough yet, so I'll practice and wait. No, show up, do things, try things, fail. If you fail, you learn that way. When you are afraid, you are not doing anything. It's only actions that count. What have you done for your career or hobby today? Dreaming and talking is nice, but it doesn't take you anywhere. Creating new designs does. Uploading them to a website does. Pitching does. Posting on social media might, <laughs> but hiding and doubting and waiting doesn't advance you. Everybody was a beginner at some point, even the famous designers and artists. People could have been doing it for decades. Their starting point was perhaps 10 years ago or even more, and yours is today. But we also cannot be resentful that someone has had a better or earlier start. That's part of the game. So do what is possible in your situation. People of certain personality types often feel like they need permission to do things. And what they often don't realize is that the one giving this permission to you is you. You have to allow yourself to do the things you want. But actually, by default, you are permitted to create, to pick up a new hobby and even start a new career. If you still feel like you need external permission, here it is. I'm giving it to you now. You are allowed to make patterns, sell them, try new things, take part in design challenges. You are allowed to fail at things. Get up and keep going. Ask yourself, who are you afraid of? Whose permission do you think you need to do things? Who will judge you? Will they actually judge you? Are you 100% sure? Or could this be a self-imposed limitation? People don't care about us as much as we think they do. Maybe you think other designers will judge you. The experienced designers won't judge you. If they feel secure in their craft, they are busy working on their own career. If some people act weird towards you, they might be intimidated by you. But that means that you are good and it's not your problem to address, it's their problem. You have the right to be a part of this community. Some people are competitive and even hateful, but most people are really sweet. We all are like planets spinning our own orbits in the same universe. Thinking whose permission you unconsciously seek, it could also be a deeper internal question. For example, childhood trauma from an overly strict parent. The important thing to know is that you are grown now. You don't need your mom's or dad's permission to do things. You take your own decisions now. I'm not a psychologist. This might be something to look into with your therapist if that's something you're interested in. So there is a phrase that goes, do it with the confidence of a mediocre white man. Now, I don't feel super cool about this joke because it's kind of offensive and in the past few decades, the white man has become the demon and the ultimate evil. But well, there are reasons for it. And there is a grain of truth there, right? There's lots of data that show men, particularly Western white men, are paid more, they get raises easier, they feel more entitled to anything at all. And we can actually learn from it. <laughs> Look at mediocre artists and designers. They keep going. It's not always the matter of the biggest talent and skills. Sometimes very simple designs are licensed. An artist has a huge social media following, 
so they get licensing deals, but their art is average at best. I mean, in a, in a perfect smiley world, I should be saying that there is no bad art and everybody's awesome and great, but we know there is mediocre art or even bad art. So I wanted to give you an example of an artist whose classes I took once. And you know, when I saw his work, I was like, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not like extraordinary. I've seen you know, better art. Talking about art is very difficult because it's very subjective. I don't want to insult anybody and I hope you understand, you know, we all have our tastes and it's unacceptable, you know, to say certain things in certain places, but here we are kind of, you know, imagine you are sitting with me in my studio and we are kind of gossiping. So I'm expressing my personal feelings and opinions about everything that you know are my own and don't have to coincide with everybody else's opinions so that artist was so calm and so confident and i was like how does he do it he's nothing that special to be honest with you but he was like so entitled and so happy and confident and I ask him, you know, how his day is going, like, what, what is your lifestyle? And he's like, you know, I go to paint for an entire day somewhere in the fields. And then I come home, you know, like his wife has a stable job with benefits and everything. And he just like paints for weeks. And I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be amazing <laughs> if I could do that too? But, you know, I come from a very traditional system of upbringing where woman usually does the most stuff about the house this, this is an extremely complicated topic and in the united states things are very different very often in families you know m the man and the woman are equal or it doesn't even have to be you know man and woman but what i wanted to say is giving yourself this permission to you know practice your art and not to worry about you know the financial side and kind of take your time you know take several years to blossom as an artist is amazing and i was like where do you get this confidence because i have so much guilt all the time that you know my husband is the main breadwinner and you know most of my life i worked full-time jobs or part-time jobs but the last couple of years i actually you know i quit my corporate design job and i have been doing pattern talent full time constantly feeling guilty that i'm not bringing as much income so what was i gonna say you know he's a regular person he's a regular artist not a genius you know maybe he's good but main point is believing in yourself giving yourself this permission to do these things you love so you too can be an artist and designer if you want to there is no need to earn this right if you believe in it people will eventually believe in it too but you have to be standing up for yourself the one showing up and sharing your work don't wait to get discovered or praised or being granted this right to be an artist or designer we need to possess our true core no matter what people say about me i know who i am i'm an artist i'm a textile designer when i show up to some of the painting events where most artists are men in their 60s they look at me you know with like distrust but i know i'm a decent painter i know where i stand you can take the paintbrush from my cold dead hands so remember who you are and believe in yourself and it's not easy i know it's easy to say but figuring out your true identity and your core values it's a lifelong journey let me know if we need to make a video about it is it possible to eliminate the imposter syndrome well but do we have to i still feel it sometimes here and there I think it's a marker of being in touch with reality. Self-doubt shows that you analyze the information, you see what is going on, you know that someone is better at certain things and you are also better at others. I think it's all about the healthy balance of self-reflection and objective judgment. Things get better, I promise. So when I graduated from college in textile design and started working in-house at a global company, those were very difficult times for me. I felt like a complete disaster. I felt like I suck at things. I felt like I don't know anything. 
but I remember this sensation too after you know my first college in English and German I started a job like a secretarial translator job at a shoe factory in Belarus where it was super busy, super fast paced and I also felt like everything I learned in college was useless and I had to learn everything on the job. So back to the designer job, you know, of course some things from college were useful but I would say about 80% I had to learn on the job and at first, you know, people are supposed to give you training, it's every job is different and you know my co-workers would answer my questions and people sat with me maybe for like two days and <laughs> explain things but you know it can't last forever people have to go back and do their work and also people get annoyed <laughs> very quickly because they have to like train you and babysit you and I didn't want to be you know baby sat is that correct so very quickly you realize you're on your own baby and no one will save you but you know as you come to the job you are expected to perform your duties right you're not supposed to like learn the craft entirely right you're supposed to know something have some skills so i think in a situation like this it's important to understand you know it's important to give yourself some grace and say yes I am a beginner yes I am learning but I am doing my best I sincerely want to learn as quick as possible and everybody started somewhere and as I promised at the beginning of this video your advantage over experienced professionals can you guess what it is it's your enthusiasm, passion and shining eyes. You might have noticed that if you've ever changed jobs or perhaps a new person joined your current position, your current job, when you've been doing something for a while, whether you want it or not, you get tired and the novelty wears off. And then comes the new co-worker with shining eyes who are eager and passionate and ready to dig in. Don't underestimate it. It's a big source of energy that you can use as a fuel on your artist journey. And finally, if you would like to feel a little less like a beginner in the industry, take my introduction to surface pattern and textile design Skillshare class that lays out your options, terminology and income streams for textile designers. The link is in the description and don't forget to like this video, subscribe and follow me on Instagram, write comments below and remember patterns are everywhere and don't be afraid to be a beginner. Own it. Look here. Root for your own damn self. Be your own biggest supporter first and foremost. Believe in yourself. I will leave you with this wonderful tweet here and until next time. Bye. baby sat is that correct baby seated <laughs> baby sitting sit grammar grammar minute a minute of grammar give me one sec baby sat so i haven't used this verb form in a while mm -hmm.